Hi, LCC150D. This week we're going to look at chapter 10. In this video we'll cover the first half of the chapter. So that means we're going to be looking at the idea of probability, probability models, probability rules. So what the heck is probability? Well, we've lived with it all our lives and you've probably seen things like this. In fact, it's one of the sites I recommended that you look at. And sometimes if you go up by probabilities, we wonder where did they come from and what are the odds of us getting that particular thing. For instance, if you are looking at some of the injuries, sometimes we tend to be uh, thinking too much about some of these injuries. But you can see that if we look at the odds of injury from fireworks, for instance, this one. Okay, it's 19,556 to 1. But the odds of injury from shaving are 6,585 to 1. Okay, so sometimes we think that if we go on a trip in a plane, then it's going to be much more dangerous, but actually it's going to be more dangerous for you to go to the airport by car than it is to fly in a plane. So there are a lot of these things here that you can look at. And uh, the odds of, uh, by the way, the odds of a meteor landing on your head is 182 trillion to 1. So you have a good shot of making it for the year. Now, any kind of injury in during a year is 1 in 1,820. That's not too comforting. Dying in a car accident, there it is, 1 in 18,585. So the uh, odds will even go down. And sometimes when you think about some of the things we take, we worry about. Remember the shark attacks a few summers ago and we're all worried about it not going in the water. It's 300 million to 1. Yet, do we take care of ourselves? It's 1 in 6 that will have a stroke. 1 in 3 that will have heart disease. So we, sometimes 1 in 10. So sometimes we have to think of the odds of getting something. Rectal cancer. Colon cancer. It's also high. Prostate cancer for men. 1 in 6 women one in nine so the odds of getting breast, uh, breast cancer are less than the prostate cancer right now during this time of year everything is pretty well focused and uh, not everything but obviously a lot of people are focused on the 63 matchups <clears throat> in the NCAA basketball even though you're not interested in basketball uh, college basketball I should say you may want to take a pay attention a little bit to what the heck does this all mean of course there are all these teams and they're about to be playing each other and some people have made odds on which ones have won. Now, there are top seeds. There are four divisions. and go back, four divisions, four bracket, four areas, the east, west, then the southwest, and the, and the southeast. Well, each of these teams has a number one seed, like Ohio State, Duke, Pittsburgh, and Kansas. And Kansas is the number one seed, uh, is one, the one predicted to win it all. And if you look at this particular one, this site with sports lines, it's actually a betting site, you can bet on anything, by the way, uh, even as to uh, what color the uh, next car will go by in your house. But Kansas is a 5-to-1 shot, and Duke is a 9-to-2. Let's look at Pittsburgh. Where the heck is Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh's up here, 8-to-1, and Ohio State is uh, somewhere in there, and you can probably see it right there, 7-to-2. So, so those are the favorite teams. If you are a fan of Old Dominion, you have a 200 to 1 shot. What the heck does that mean? Richmond, 500 to 1. And uh, Butler, which came, went into the finals last year, is 200 to 1 this year. So those are the odds of a team making it. So what the heck are we going to do with all this stuff? So we're going to introduce probability. <clears throat> probability is a science of chance behavior. Okay, Obviously, I can read. And chance behavior is unpredictable in the short run, but has a regular and predictable pattern in the long run. So you need a lot of chances, a lot of events <clears throat> for the actual odds to occur. So that's why weather is a good uh, indication of probability. We have so much data and so many patterns that you can predict a certain event, an outcome from a certain uh, situation. And that's why they can tell with a pretty good accuracy as to what the weather will be. It's not always perfect because nature is always unpredictable in a way, but you can usually predict a certain pattern from previous. So we have a lot of history. You can have a lot of better chances of indicating the probability of something happening. <clears throat> and then random numbers, randomness means that individual outcomes are uncertain, <clears throat> like the sex of your child. But there's a regu regular distribution of outcomes in a large number of repetitions. Okay, it's either going to be a boy or a girl. And a relative frequency, of an outcome settles down to one value over the long run. That one value is then defined to be the probability of that outcome. So, if we go back to the NBA 
statistics. What does this mean? Let's say, let's look at Pittsburgh. Actually, Pittsburgh is up here. <clears throat> Eight to one. That means that out of nine games, they have, and nine times in the tournament, they have a chance of winning it eight times. Okay, I'm sorry. No, they have, they have, let me do that backwards. <clears throat> out of nine, they can win, out of nine times, they can win one game. Old Dominion, in other words, they could, out of 201 times, they would win one time. Okay, so their odds are not very good compared to Pittsburgh and even to Kansas, which was 5-1 to one down here, which means that they would win one out of five times in there, which is much better. Now, they have to play. There are 64 teams in the, in the tournament, so you have to uh, consider that sometimes there are upsets, and they take into account those upsets. So when people pick their brackets, the, the teams in their brackets, they may not get uh, – it's very rare that you can get every single team. In fact, those are pretty decent odd, pretty high odds to get every team that you pick to go into the brackets to the next round. So we're going back to here, and relative frequency probabilities, okay, can be determined or checked by observing a long series of independent trials, experience many samples, simulation. You can slow this down to read this particular slide. Um, the best way to in, to explain all this is coin flipping. On coin flipping, you have a one, one out of two chance of getting ahead. Okay, it's obvious. You only have two choices. So your set, your your whole your whole uh, scheme of things is that you only have two possible outcomes. So you can see that in this graph, the first few tosses, some are heads, some are not heads, and finally it starts settling down as you get to more and more and more and more and more and more. So if we did a simulation, which you have, you have this applet. In a, in a probability in the site that's the same site as the uh, as the quiz, we can do. Let's see, we'll do about ten tosses. You can see ten tosses down here, and we'll toss them. The probability of heads is 0.5, by the way. Okay, you can see it goes down and up, and then it starts evening and out. But the more that you do, let's do 50 and toss them. And you can see it starts getting a little bit closer to the 0.5 that you, we would predict. Okay, and you can do this for as long as you want. And if we did 100, uh, I think it goes up to 500 tosses. We're not going to stay on this particular one for a long time. But you can see it evens out. So you go 500 tosses. Now the odds are getting pretty darn close to 0.5. They go down a little bit, but they're pretty darn close. So from the textbook, all right, if I can find that textbook, we have it right here. And they do the same thing. And they even give examples of people who have done this. So if you don't have a lot, if you have a lot of free time in your hand, you can take a coin. He tossed it 4,040 times. And this was his probability, 0 0.5069. And this person did 24,000 times, and he had 0 0.5005. We're getting closer to 0.5. And then this person did it, uh, let's see, tossed a coin 10,000 times, which was less. So 0 0.5067. So you can see the 24,000 right here, got a, they got a proportion of, 0 0.5005. Now, less than that of 10,000, it's a little bit higher. And then over here, it's even a little bit higher. So you can see the more tosses you do. So if you want to do a, a research project on this particular one, be my guest, but make it over 24,000 tosses so at least you can get your name in the next edition of the textbook. All right. So now, probability models. Let's go back to the slide. Probability models. What the heck does this mean? Well, it means you have a sample space of all the outcomes that you can have. For instance, the sex of your child, you have a sample space of boy and girl. That's it. For a coin being tossed, it's either heads or tails. Okay, now an event is an outcome or a set of outcomes. So it's either a boy, it's either a girl. It's either heads, it's either a tails. A probability model is a mathematical description. Okay, so you can read that, but I'll give you an example here of rolling a pair of fair dice. They're not loaded. These, This is the sample space. This whole area is a sample space. If you've played any game with two dice, then you know that two die, actually. You know that these are the possible outcomes that you have. If you've ever played Yahtzee, of course, you have more than, you have five die in there. So you have more of a sample space of all the probabilities. So here is a sample space right here. And the chances of each individual outcome, you have a 1-1, one, one, a 2-2, two, two, or a 2-4, two, two, or a 5-5, five, five, or a 3-6. You have all of these. There are 36 outcomes 
and you have one out of 36 chance of getting this particular outcome here okay so that's your sample space and your probability is one out of 36 and then when you do that as a decimal it's 0 0.0278 so here are the probability rules the number has to be between 0 and 1 notice this was 0 0.0278 you can't have a probability over 1 that means it would occur more than all the time it doesn't make sense so that may, can be interpreted as a proportion of times that a certain event can be expected to occur. If the probability of an event is more than one, it will occur uh, more than 100%. That's what I just said. Now, the probability rule number two. Because some outcomes must occur in every child, this, a trial, the sum of the probabilities for all possible outcomes must be exactly one. So that means that it's going to be one. The probability of you dying, sorry, but it's going to be one. If the sum of all the probabilities is less than 1, then the resulting probability model will be incoherent. So I'll get to that in a second as to what does that what actually is what that means. If two events have no outcomes in common, they are said to be disjoint. So this the probability will be one or the other. Okay? Or is the magic word here. So age of women at first childbirth under 20, 25%, 33%, and over 25, 42%. Can't be both. It has to be one or the other. Okay, you can't have a first child at 20 and then over and then after 25. And then probability number four is that an event does not occur is one minus the probability that the event does occur. So if we go back to our basketball odds, let's look at Kansas again. Okay, five to one. Now that would mean that out of six times, the probability that they will win is five. I'm sorry, again, I make that, I'm, I have to be clear on this. If they will have a chance of, if they enter the tournament six times, they will win it one time, okay? So, that means in this particular case here that the, the opposite is four, okay? The opposite is four. They will lose four times. So, if a probability, let's see, a jury, measure, a jury member, you assess the probability that the defendant is guilty to be 0 0.80, that means 0 0.20 is the other is the uh, 1 minus the probability. So you always subtract from 1. If the probability that a flight will be on time is 0 0.70, then the probability that we'd be late is 0 0.30. And then it's probability rules. This is what it looks like here, and this is what it looks like in your textbook. Let's look at it right here. So that's what I said. The probability of a, this means probability of A, event A, is between 0 and 1. That was the first one. Okay, that's what it looks like mathematically. The sample space is always one. Everything has to add up to one. Two events that are disjoint, you put the or. Or is the, ma is the magic letter word. And that you add up the two probabilities. And then for any event that doesn't occur, that does not occur if it's A, it's 1 minus PA. So let's look at an example. Example 10-6. That means that we, what is the probability that we roll a 5? Here are all out of 36 of these. Remember that whole sample space? 36 of possibilities. I'll go back if you forgot, because sometimes we do. 36 probabilities. Okay, let's go back to that. Now here are the 36. We have one, two, three, four, four possible outcomes of getting five. So it's one out of 36, one out of 36, one out of 36, one out of 36. Okay, so the probabilities, you add them. Okay, why do we add them? Right there. It is one or the other. So, 4 over 36 comes out to 0 0.1111. Now, the next thing is, what is the probability of rolling anything other than a 5? That means that all the others, so we have 1 minus this probability. The probability of not getting a 5 is 0.889. So, 89% of the time, you won't get a 5. 11% of the time, you'll get a 5. Okay? If it's the outcome that it gets odd, all right, so you have, uh, there will be a 3, a 5, 7, 9, and 11, again, from your sample space. So we have we have possibilities of 3. We have two of them. Let's look which ones are the two of them. We have one there, and we have one there. Okay, so that's two possibilities. We have four possibilities of getting 5. Just found that out. 6 of getting a 7, and so on. Add those because it falls under this disjoint and you get 18 over 36. So the probability of getting a non-number is one half, which is a dumb moment.